general categories i think you have studied all these systems in your uh, signals and systems course also but we will quickly review because i am i am uh, covering the first chapter which is just the review of uh, signals and systems so as i said i will take five six lectures on that uh, general categories by which the systems can be uh, differentiated are static systems time invariant and variant systems linear systems uh, causal systems and stable systems now let us look at uh, these systems one by one uh, let's look at the static systems first in the case of static systems a discrete time system is called static or memory less if its output at any instant for example yn is the output and xn is the input now at any instant time depends at most on the input sample at the same time but not on past or future samples of the input so in this system uh, the output does not depend output depends only on the present uh, input sample at the same time but it doesn't depend on past or future samples of the input so this is a static system this is a static system whereas if you look at yn is equal to xn plus 3 xn minus 1 here the output depends on the previous input also so these are not static systems but these are uh, dynamic systems so that can be the classification of static and dynamic system now if we look at the uh, time invariant and time variant systems now a time invariant system is defined as follows if the input is delayed by uh, a factor n0 then the output will also be delayed by the same factor so we can define it like this a system is time invariant if a time shift in the input signal results in an identical time shift in the uh, in the output signal all right so these uh, these are time invariant and variant systems so let's take the example to so determine this is determine if the system is time variant or time invariant now let's say we have uh, this system where yn is equal to n of xn now we want to uh, see whether this is time invariant or uh, variant system the no what is the response of the system to xn minus k so this will be equal to wn which is n times x of n minus k but if we delay yn by k units so yn minus k will be this which is not equal to uh, which is not equal to this uh, output that means this system is time variant system because if you uh, the response of the system to this input and when you delay the uh, when you delay the output by k units so you get this response so that means yn minus k here is not equal to wn which is this value and in the case of yn minus k you have this value which is these are not these two values are not same so therefore this is a uh, time uh, in uh, time variant system okay now let us look at linear systems so linear systems actually are those systems which fulfill the property of homogeneity homogeneity what is homogeneity if you uh, scale the amplitude of the input then the amplitude of the output is also scaled by the same amount so if you multiply let's say an input is there which is x1n and you multiply it with a certain amplitude which is certain uh, constant which is a1 then output should also be scaled with the same value and a linear system also fulfills the property of additivity where two inputs uh, when they are added uh, multiplied by their respective constants the outputs are also added multiplied with their uh, respective constants so that means a linear system follows the property of homogeneity number 1 number 2 it also follows the property of additivity okay all right so let's look at what uh, a linear so this is uh, this is how you can prove a system a linear system uh, whether the system is a linear or non linear system so let's let's take the example let's consider the case of a uh, three sample averager what is the system we have yn equal to 1 by 3 uh, x of n plus 1 plus x of n plus x of n minus 1 so three input values are there these three values are to be averaged so th therefore this type of system i am calling it three sample averager now we want to see whether this system is a linear system or not now xn uh, when it is transformed uh, when it gives an output of yn 
So how we can prove the linear system? Then that means a of x1 n plus b of x2 n should be equal to uh, now what is y n? Y n is uh, so therefore this uh, y n y1 n multiplied by a1 a1 y n y1 n plus a2 y2 n should be equal to this value. Now first factor we take is a1 of y1 n. Now we say 1 by 3. Uh, it is a, I'm taking here a and b constant. So uh, not a1 and a2, but I'm taking a and b constant. So if you, if you multiply a y n with a y a, it will give you a y n. And when you multiply it with b, it will give you b y n. So these six factors you get will are the result of multiplication of this y n with a and b. So if you solve this, then you will be able to get a y1 n plus b y2 n. So that means when the input is scaled with, uh, when one input which is x1 n is scaled with uh, amplitude a and the other input x2 n is scaled with an amplitude b and they are added, that means the same um, kind of uh, functionality will appear at the output also. So that means this is a linear system. It's very easy to prove it, right? Now let us look at this example where y n is equal to x square n. So we know that we know the system uh, y a of y one n plus b of y two uh, n, right? So this must be equal to a of x one n plus uh, b of uh, x two n. Now when you do uh, this uh, a of x one n plus I mean, when you try to, this is x square n. So uh, this has to be a of x square n plus b of uh, x2 n, right? And when you do the whole square, because that has to be, this input is, has to be for whole square. So if you a square, if you open the square, then you get a square x1 n square, b square x2 n square. So this extra term will come here. That means this is not, a linear system. This is because what I'm trying to do is the output is the square of the input. Now, what is your input uh, in the transformed system? Your input is a x one n plus b x two n. So therefore, this input has to be squared, right? When you square this input, you get this term, which is exactly not equal to this term, which is not equal to a of x one n square. Uh, x to n square. So that means this is a nonlinear system. Okay. All right. Let's look at another example where yn is equal to nxn and see whether this system is a linear system or a nonlinear system. So what we do is a y1n. So we write a of nxn n of x1n plus b n of x2 n. All right. So what you do is you, this is my y1 n. This is my y2 n. All right. If you uh, now what so therefore you can say a of y1 n plus b of y2 n. That means if the system is, um, go, is going through the scaling and the additivity, then the output is also being scaled with the same amplitudes and it is also following the additive operation. So it is equal to this. So the system is a linear system. Okay. Now let's look at what are causal systems. All these things I think you have studied in your uh, signals and systems course also. But anyway, the system is said to be causal if the output of the system at any time n depends only on the present and past inputs. Only at the present and past inputs, but does not depend on future inputs. So it's this type of system will be called as a causal system, whereas a system does not satisfy, if, this, if a system does not satisfy this condition, that means it depends on the future inputs also, it is called a non-causal system. Such a system has an output that depends not only on the present and past inputs, but also on the future uh, inputs. Now let's take an example. Where one example is yn is equal to xn minus xn minus one. So you see here 
the output depends only at the only on the present input which is xn and the past input which is xn minus 1 so it does not depend on the future inputs so this is therefore this is a causal system y n is equal to a of x a of uh, a into xn right so here also the output depends only on the present input so therefore it is a causal system now y n equal to xn plus 3 xn plus 4 now this is a future value right so therefore the output here depends on the future values also here in the system so therefore this is a non causal system now y n equal to uh, x of minus n right so in this case this is also a causal system why because when you put n equal to minus 1 so that means y of minus 1 and n equal to minus 1 here if you will put this will be x of 1 that's what I am uh, writing here. Let n equal to minus uh, 1, y of minus 1 equal to y, x of 1. The output at n equal to minus 1 depends on the input at n equal to 1. That means it is depending on the future values also. That's how I can prove it, uh, uh, the system to be a non-causal system. Okay. Then, this is also one of the conditions of uh, causal systems for discrete time uh, sequences. Discrete time systems uh, or sequences is, are, uh, I mean, they belong to a causal system if it has zero values for n less than zero. This is an important condition for causality, which says that the uh, values of the values of the uh, output values or values of the function are zero for n less than zero. For example, if you look at this function, where value for less than uh, n less than zero, all values are zero, and uh, therefore this is a causal system, and it is also a stable system. But we will look at the stable system uh, in the next slide. So, what are stable system? A discrete signal x n. This is about the input I am talking about. A discrete signal x n, which is the input signal, we call it bounded. Right? When do we call it bounded? If there exists a finite m. Right, such that mod of x of n is less than m for all n. So this is about the input, the bounding condition for an input. A discrete signal, <coughs> excuse me, a discrete signal x n is bounded if there exists a finite m such that mod of x n is less than m for all n. Now, when do we call a system to be uh, stable? If it is in a BIBO condition. So, what is that? A discrete time system in bounded input. This first condition that I talked about is the bounded input. All right. Where Xn is mod of Xn is less than M. So, therefore, it is bounded input. Now, a discrete time system in bounded uh, condition. So, we call it BIBO condition also. Now, this is bounded stable, BIBO stable if every bounded input sequence xn produces a bounded output sequence. So that means where the maximum value of the input is less than or equal to a, then the maximum value of the output should be also less than or equal to b. So that means the input is also bounded and the output is also bounded to a certain limit. So therefore, we call this type of system as the uh, stable system. Now let us look at this system yn is equal to n yn minus 1 plus xn. And the system we say that it is at rest for the initial condition. That means uh, for y minus 1 equal to 0. So this is the initial condition given where the system is at rest for uh, y minus n minus 1 equal to 0. Now we have to check if the system is BIBO stable or not. Now, okay. Now we say that for n equal to 0, if you, you will have to take this equation and you will see that for y0, uh, y0 will be equal to, for n equal to 0, because the first term will become 0, second term is x0. All right, x0, and we say that, let me just clear this. Let me say that if xn is a u is uh, equal to uh, unit step function, then uh, xn is less than equal to 1. 
right so i can i have bounded the uh, input that i have taken an input which is xn is equal to un then i this input is bounded but for this bounded input the output is let's check the output because when you have to prove something wrong only one condition is sufficient uh, if you are able to set if you are able to say that a system is wrong uh, for even a one value then the system is wrong for all values right so that's what we are trying to uh, do here we take one input although this is a uh, this is a common system any anything can be any input in the system but for proving our case we take one input which is which is un so we say that the input is bounded fine but let's check the output for n equal to 0 it is equal to 1 for n equal to 1 this y1 equal to 1 into y0 plus x1 this is 2 n equal to 2 this will further increase if you go on increasing the values of n the output will also go on increasing so which means that this is an unbounded output which is unbounded hence the system is unstable so output is increasing right by this way we can prove that the system is uh, system is an unstable system now uh, try so, no. so, yes sir yes, yes. assume kaise kiya ki x n equal to u n leke solve kiya matlab pata kaise chalega ki isi se solve karna hai see um, that's what i said if you have a system and you are you are required to prove that this is uh, this hypothesis is wrong right you take any one option in this case though i have taken the unit step function because the normal input functions we use to test a system are for example the impulse function the unit step function the ramp function all right but in general i am saying if you want to prove that a system is wrong you only one uh, option is required if the system does not work for that option that means the system is uh, uh, wrong for that hypothesis so that's the point i am trying to make i have to prove that uh, this system is an unstable system how can i prove i took one of the input as x equal to un because these are some standard functions unit step function impulse function ramp function sinusoidal function so i take un as one of the function and i see that this the output here is unbounded all right so therefore i can say that uh, this is all by intuition intuition means i tested the system for x n is equal to un only thing i want to show is that the uh, the for a stable system the input has to be bounded also and the output has to be bounded also for all possible existing conditions but this is not happening here so therefore i can say this is unbounded all right okay sir but the you you see why you because you have started learning dsp once you will uh, understand and go through more systems you will see that these are some very common functions i will come to the uh, delta function once again when you when you input let me tell you one thing when you input a delta function what is a delta function it is only an impulse uh, at let's say n equal to 0 the function is 1 right now when you excite a system with a delta function that means with an impulse you also know that what is the fourier transform of a uh, delta function it is a flat response so which means when you excite a system with a delta function the system is excited for all the possible frequencies that is the advantage of exciting the system with uh, with delta function now after that you check the output of the system and you will be able to know and that we call as the impulse response of the system i will come to that uh, in the future slides uh, what is uh, an impulse response of the system now this is only uh, this slide shows only when a function is delayed or advanced i have already shown this slide but anyway now let's look at this uh, delta function the point that i was trying to make uh, just now let's say this is delta n minus k at a the function value is 1 right and this is my xn function 
which which has some sample values at n equal to zero, at n equal to one, two, k minus one, and so on. Now, when I multiply x n with delta n minus k, all because delta n minus k is zero at all values except k equal except n equal to k. So that means my output will be equal to one only at k equal uh, only only at n equal to k, right? So this is my y n. When multiplied with x, when x n multiplied with delta function, my output behaves like this. I will make my point uh, in the further slide. So that means, let's say if p n is given like this, what I can I can represent this function as in terms of the delta function. How? Uh, this is my a of minus three. This is some coefficient value at a of minus three. If I I multiply uh, it with delta n plus three, so this it will give me this value. All other values are zero in between. At n equal to one, it is uh, of course delta n minus one. So a one multiplied by delta n minus one, and so on. An example of expressing arbitrary discrete time sequence as a sum of scaled and delayed unit impulses. Okay, I will. So what we can do is uh, what we can explain from here is that if x x n function can be expressed in terms of the in terms of the multiplication of x k and delta k and as a sum of uh, the scaled version what are scaled version my delta pulses are scaled by x k as uh, these these pulses are getting scaled by a a minus 3 a1 a2 and so on so i can say here uh, this xn is what xn is the scaled version of uh, these impulses And summed, we are k going from minus infinity to infinity. Now, for real time signals, we can express uh, from uh, we can take the timing, we can take the k values as k equal to zero to infinity. And for a real time signal, but with a finite number of samples, we can express x n by x uh, k going from uh, zero to capital n minus one. What I am trying to do is. i am trying to come to the formula of convolution all right now uh, if uh, uh, if it is a finite sum i can also take i can also express xn as uh, from minus n2 to n1 uh, like this right from my, from uh, this is a uh, i mean this is a finite uh, input from um, uh, minus n2 to uh, plus n1 i can express my delta i can express my xn in terms of the scaled version of the impulse values so this is a discrete sequence basically any discrete sequence can be expressed as scaled versions of the delta function all right and summed of course now generally you see uh, here what, what is there it is xk and delta n minus k now generally you also uh, you have studied earlier also the convolution of two sequences xn and yn is defined as xn this is the symbol of uh, the convolution xn convolution with yn this is equal to xk yn minus k we will see graphically what is the meaning of this uh, function where and or we can also say that xn minus k and yk because uh, both will give them it is same results and we also know that convolution is commutative where xn convolved with yn or yn convolved with xn uh, gives the same result now let's say if we have this system right where xn is uh, a times because here it is the summer now this summer is uh, summing what summing a of xn plus b of xn minus 1 because this is delayed here xn is delayed by one unit of time so at this point you will get uh, a of xn plus b of xn minus 1 right and this summer is actually summing the output the feedback path which is c times yn minus 1 so this is
Now, what is my y n actually? Y n is c times v n minus one. This is how I can represent. This is the difference equation. This system, this is a discrete time system, and I earlier told you every discrete time system will be represented by a, a difference equation, not by differential equation, right? Now, let us okay. Let's try to calculate the unit impulse response of this function. What do you mean by unit impulse response? When the input is x n to this system, to this system, if you apply input which is a, a delta function, that means it is a unit impulse function. All the values of the output that we will get, those will be called as the impulse response of the system. Now we assume that v n is equal to zero for n less than equal to zero for uh, that means we are assuming all the initial conditions as zero and we will start from n equal to zero one two and so on for n equal to zero this equation we have to use this equation v n equal to this equation and y n is this equation these two equations if we use what is v zero v zero will be equal to for n equal to zero a of x zero plus b of x minus one plus y zero. Right, and we are assuming that for n less than equal to zero, v n is zero. So uh, right, so this will be equal to what is a of uh, x zero? It will be one because at this time, uh, at, uh, for n equal to zero, we are using a delta function. This will be a dot one plus b dot zero because x of minus n we are assuming zero, y of zero we are also assuming zero for. Uh, n equal to zero. So therefore, we get uh, v a v zero equal to a. That means you can get for n equal to zero, you get the response like this. For n equal to one, again by substituting the values, you will be able to get it equal to c into b plus ac, right? And uh, for other values also for y three, you will be getting this value. For n equal to n minus one, you will get this value. There will be a kind of uh, uh, GP series that you can solve. Or directly it will come from here because if you uh, for y let me also now end the show here again uh, for n equal to two right from here we get y three equal to c square b plus ac and for uh, uh, in general for n equal to n minus one you get this value for n uh, for n equal to n that means for the nth value. You get this value. So, what is this HN? HN we call as the impulse response of the system. What do you mean by impulse response of the system? To a system, when you apply an input which is a delta function, when uh, let me come to the uh, this slide. This is let's say H is a system. We represent a system by H. What do you mean by H? H is the transfer function of the system. Now, for a system whose transfer function is some h, and it has one input which is x n, it has one output which is y n. Now, if we apply at the input a delta function, right? What? How do we represent the output? We represent the output by h n. We call this as the impulse response of the system. Right. When the input, please remember that when the input is delta n, and what what output we get, that we call as the impulse response of the system. The output tells us the system behavior as the system is being. This line is very important. Normally, let me read this line. Actually, the output tells us the system behavior as the system is being because it tells us the system. When you hit the system by a delta function. The output tells us the system behavior as the system is being hit by all input frequencies. Now, what is the meaning of this line? This line says that when the input is a delta function, what is a delta function? It is for n equal to zero, it is uh, one. 
Now, if you take the Fourier transform of this uh, function xn is equal to delta n, the Fourier transform will be a flat response. If the response is, that means the frequency response is flat. What is the meaning of that? At all values of frequencies, all values of frequencies, the system behavior is the same. If your frequency response, because on, what is the frequency response? On the x-axis, you have frequency. On the y-axis, you have gain or something else. So if, if it is a flat system, that means for all the values of frequencies, the system behaves with the same um, output. That means it behaves the same. So that means there is an advantage of hitting, exciting the system with delta function. What you do is you excite the system with all the frequencies, all the input frequencies, you excite the system, and then you check the behavior of the system, which we call as the impulse response of the system. And we can know the response of the system for all the frequencies if we hit it by a delta function. So that's the importance of actually impulse response of this system. All right, so uh, we also, we can say that the system will be time invariant. That means when the system is hit by a delta function, the output will be an impulse response, which is HN. What is a time invariant system means? If, it, if the input is delayed by K, the output will also be delayed by K. So this will be a time invariant system. And since the, in, if you look, if you, you have already understood that if you hit the system with delta function, you get HN. Now, say, since the system is time invariant, what do we get from that point? We, we know that if the input is delayed by K, the output will also be delayed by K. Say, because why? Because the system is in time invariant. So I can write this. And I also know that if the, uh, I also know the homogeneity principle. What is the homogeneity principle? If the delta function is multiplied, is scaled by some amplitudes, then the output will be also scaled by the same value. I can also therefore write, if xk are some amplitudes multiplied with the delta function like this, I can write, the, uh, that means the output will also be multiplied with the same value. So xk delta n minus k, is equal to x k h n minus k, right? And now recall that each x n can be written, if you remember that, each x n can be written as a summation of the scaled, uh, or scaling, as a summation of the weighted impulses, uh, k going from minus infinity to infinity. So I can write this as, uh, if this is my input, you see how we have tried to derive the convolution formula, right? We know that if you hit the system by a delta function, you get impulse response, we represent it by HN. We have, I have already shown you here how to calculate the uh, impulse response of the system. Now, because the system is time invariant, I can write this. If the, this tells me if the input is delayed by K, output will also be delayed. System is also homogeneous. What do you mean by that? If the input is, which is delta function, is scaled by certain amplitude, the output will also be scaled by the same amplitude. So I reach to xk hn minus k. Now I know that xk, now what is any uh, xk or any rather any xn, xn as the input, I can represent any xn with the scaled versions of the any discrete time sequence. I can represent as the uh, scaled version of the delta impulses. And if I apply this type of waveform to, an in, to a system, which is H, I will get what? I will get this type of output, which means K going from minus infinity to infinity, XK, H and minus K, which is actually the convolution formula. This is also, this is actually known as the convolution sum. What is convolution sum? Actually, this is summation here. The input is the summation of the weighted uh, delta pulses. Output is what? Output, output is the summation of the uh, scaling of the impulse function, right? So we call this as the convolution formula. And we also know that, uh, and we can express this uh, xn going to yn is xn hn. And we know that convolution is also commutative. So, uh, we can. We already uh, saw what is uh, commutative and all. 
So Xn, so system X, which is the impulse response of the system, we get Yn, which is the output. Now, yn is equal to xn uh, convolution with uh, hn. So these are some standard formulas. If you delay, if you put hn minus k, xk, or you put hk, xn minus k, you will get the same uh, output sequence. All right. Now, what is the, uh, just to introduce, but we will, in our course, we will deal in detail uh, with these concepts of FIR and IIR. Because uh, in your syllabus, the main focus is on the design of FIR filters and the IIR filter. But just to introduce, if um, let's say input is delta n, uh, some uh, uh, that means the value is one at n equal to zero. If this is a system, the response is some finite response. Because if you if you try to write the difference equation from there, how do you write the difference equation? What is y n? Y n y n will be equal to <coughs> twice of xn and minus one by two xn minus one. So this path gives me the delayed version of xn. This path gives me the xn itself, but the delayed version is multiplied by minus 0.5 and the uh, xn will be multiplied by a factor of two. So that will be my yn. So output response is a finite response. If the impulse response of an LT LTI system is a finite duration, the system is said to be finite impulse response. So we see we can, uh, we can for the, if you write the difference equation, right, and you apply xn equal to delta n, and you try to get, this is the difference equation, yn equal to 2xn minus 0.5 xn minus 1, and you calculate the values of uh, uh, the impulse response, only two values you will get, all other values are zero. So that means it is a finite impulse response. So that means it is a, and it is an example of finite impulse response system. It is an FIR system. All right, so what is an infinite impulse response? If the impulse response of a linear time invariant system is of infinite duration, the system is said to be infinite impulse response system. So let us check. Uh, this is an example of a recursive system. What is a recursive? Let me also explain what is a recursive and non-recursive. If you see this system, this is a non-recursive system. Why? There is no feedback path. There is no path which is going from Yn to, uh, there is no path which is going backwards. There is no feedback path. So it is a non-recursive system. Whereas if you see here, there is a feedback path, right? So this is a recursive system. We will talk about these recursive and non-recursive also in detail. So let's let, let's just try to understand what is the IAR. If this is the input and this is a system, what will be YN? You will have to write, you, you must feel comfortable uh, while writing the difference equations because you will have to deal with the structures of the filters where you will have to know how to write the uh, difference equation. Xn is going, Xn is delayed by uh, Vn is the output here. What is X, what is Yn? Basically, we have to get Yn. Now, Xn is delayed by one unit of time multiplied by a uh, factor one, amplitude one. So that means it is Xn minus one. So uh, what is Yn? Yn is equal to Xn minus one, right? Y uh, okay, sorry. Yn is equal to because this is fed back also. So that means Yn will go back also. All right, what is Vn? Vn will be equal to, uh, Vn, uh, Vn will be equal to what? Vn will be equal to Xn plus Yn. All right, so that is Vn. What is Yn? Yn will be equal to Vn minus one because it is delayed by one unit, one, uh, uh, unit time. So Vn is equal to Xn plus Yn. What is Yn? Yn is equal to one because uh, here a multiplier is there, which multiplies it with a factor of one, so Vn minus. Now, if we apply Xn is equal to delta N, because we have to check the impulse response of the system to prove that whether it is finite impulse response or infinite impulse response. We, have, we apply an input Xn equal to delta N, then we calculate the values of Hn, and we, uh, if you calculate the values of Hn, and you will see that the value is not stopping. You can, it will go, or you can, you, you can, it, the, the output response is not finite. You will go on getting the values of output. So therefore, this is an example of an infinite impulse response. Let's take one more system where yn is equal to ayn minus one plus xn. 
now we have to find hn we will have to uh, uh, put an input of xn equal to delta n and we will apply the zero initial condition so if you keep the values right uh, so if n equal to 0 you get 1 n equal to 1 you get a n equal to 2 you get a2 n equal to n you get a to the uh, a n so let me actually actually this is uh, i'm sorry for that this is actually a square right? and this is a to the power n right i will make the correction when i will send you the ppt slides right and uh, this function this hn will be you can write it as a to the power n un and uh, for a less than 1 the system will behave like for a from 0 to 1 if the values of a are from 0 to 1 so this will behave like this and for a greater than 1 this will uh, be like this so that means for uh, for values from uh zero to for values of a from zero to one the system will converge and for values uh, greater than one the system will uh, actually diverge all right now uh if we have to find the impulse response hn of the following fourth order recursive system why this is a fourth order recursive system because Uh, you will see that it is x of n minus 4 so how do you get this is fourth order i have not done the z transform if you take the z transform of y this difference equation you will see that uh, for this term you will get z to the power minus 4 in the polynomial so once you will get z to the power minus 4 that is the highest power of uh, z so that means it is basically a fourth order system right and we want to find hn by letting x n equal to delta n. the procedure remains the same you can calculate all the values i am giving i will send you the slides you can um, uh, go through the values and you will be able to draw the you can draw the uh, block diagram also and so on right so you will be able to calculate all the values of the uh, impulse response at n equal to 5 you will get zero so that means it will be an example of a finite impulse response system if you find any problems in uh, looking in solving these uh, uh, by putting the values uh, you can ask me anytime there is no problem okay now this is convolution commutative law associative law you all know that xn convolved with h1 uh, bracket convolved with h2 is actually xn if you put, take it outside also inside the bracket h1 and so this uh, all these properties you are well aware of what is associativity commutativity right and what is a distributive uh, law right so this is the distributive property xn convolved with hn uh, bracket starts h1 and h2n convolution so this will be the distributive property right so finally and quickly i would like to uh, this is the convolution sum again i have done all these things right now i actually wanted to do this the graphical convolution okay so let's say you have how do you find the graphical uh, convolution values you must have studied it earlier also let's say these two sequences are there at n equal to 0 this value is there that means 1 and n equal to 1 it is 1 and so it is 1 0 -1 and 0 for n equal to 0 1 2 and 3 and this is another sequence uh, right the values are given now first operation in the graphical uh, solution of the convolution is that you will have to, you will have to either use this or use this sequence one sequence you take i am taking hn what i will do is i will flip this sequence first i will flip this sequence uh, let me take this example so if this is hk uh, it is 1 2 minus 1 and minus 1 right and xk it is uh, one uh, then zero and minus one and uh, again zero let's say i consider this as the origin right 
this is my origin that means for n equal to minus 1 it is 1 for n equal to 0 this is 1 0 minus 1 and 0 how do you, how can you do the uh, graphical convolution 9 anyway i will do this graphical convolution in the next lecture okay because somebody might have to use this zoom link so thank you so much for joining if you have any questions Uh, you are most welcome to ask either through chat or through email email i find is the best uh, way to ask question you can email me or even phone me any time to ask question please do not keep your questions with you because this is the most important subject and only uh, you can understand this subject by asking question though this is a time we cannot we, we cannot have the direct uh, face to face communication but anyway Uh, at least you can ask the questions through emails or chats uh, or maybe any other way or whatsapp whatever the way you like thank you so much i will cover the graphical convolution in the next lecture i will upload the slides that i covered uh, today thank you